like DRDO, SERP DST, ISRO, etc. He is a recipient of INSA Visiting Scientist Fellowship, SICI FMP Award 2020, and IETE Shrimati Ranjana Pal Memorial Award for the year 2020. He is a senior member IEEE, member IET UK, life member of Institution of Engineers India, and fellow IETE India. He is an associate editor of IEEE Access, IETE Circuit Devices and System Journals. He is a reviewer of IEEE Transaction on NT9 Propagation, IEEE NT9 Wireless Propagation Letters, IEEE Antennas and Propagation Magazine, IEEE Communication Magazine, IET Journal of Microwave Antennas and Propagation, IET Electronic Letter, Microwave and Optical Technology Letters, scientific reports, etc. So today, Dr. Ravi will share his knowledge on the topic dielectric resonator antennas, a potential radiator for multiband or wideband antenna systems. So we welcome you, sir. And now I hand over the session to you. And uh, uh, dear participants, I hope uh, you we will be extremely benefited uh, by uh, the lecture of Dr. Ravi. Welcome, sir. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Deepak. So, so today I am going to discuss about the, your dielectric resonator antenna and its application for the, your multiband and wideband antenna systems. So here, yeah, this is my general outlines for today's discussion. First, I will go for the, your the fundamental part of the dielectric resonator antennas, especially its introduction then the operating principle, then advantages and disadvantages, then the basic shapes, and the most important is the mode nomenclature. That is the key point of the working of the electric resonator antennas. After that, I have divided this complete presentation in two parts. The first part, which is going to be dedicated for your multiband antennas, and second part is dedicated to the wideband antennas. And one by one, I will discuss the what is the requirement and how we can generate either multiband or wideband characteristics in the DRS and different antenna structures that we have in the last five to 10 years, we have designed that I'm going to be discussing. here. And finally, the references, which is going to be important if anybody wants to go inside this particular presentation. So here, the first is the introduction and about the DI. So if you see, in the history part, then I can say that the first, this concept of dielectric resonator was introduced by the your Dr. R. D. Richmayer. And he has given the your complete theoretical concept of this particular component, which is going to be used as a oscillator in the last 50 years in our different passive microwave systems. Especially what happens in 1939, when the R.D. Richmayer has given this concept, at that time, we doesn't have the proper materials, or we can say that our material technology not up to that mark, so that whatever the theoretical concept he has given, that is going to be practically verified or experimentally verified. So from 1939 to 1960, that is almost 21 years, it will take to realize the concept given by the your Richmayer in the in the actual experimental level so that the technology can be used for their day-to-day lives. So after 21 years, this dielectric resonator basically going to be used as a passive microwave components, like as oscillators and filters. And then after 23 years, I can say that the professor as along that pictures I have shown here, he's from University of Houston, he's the first person who basically see the potentiality of the dielectric resonators as a radiator or as a antenna. And that's why the name comes into the picture, dielectric resonator antenna. It means dielectric resonator worked as a antenna here. So this is the, the fundamental history of the DRS. The first thing is, what is the dielectric resonator? So if you see the dielectric resonator, dielectric resonator is the basically a piece of ceramic materials, very low loss dielectric material. So what happens if we are going to be go for the your fundamental part of the dielectric resonator, which is nothing is the piece of ceramic material. And ceramic material is basically, I can say that is the, is a dielectric kind of 
structure or dielectric conduct materials. So if we are going to be thinking something about the, your dielectric properties in terms of the, your electrical, then we are going to be see what are the properties of their material, which is going to be characterized in terms of their electrical properties. So we are going to be get these three properties. First is the basically your permittivity. Of Excuse the me, sir. Uh, may I interrupt you, sir? Yeah, please. Uh, uh, I think your slides are not changing. It's not moving. Yeah. Now it is working. Yeah, yeah it is. Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, yes, now it's the working. next slide also. Yeah. Next yes, sir. It is. Up. It is now working. Yeah. Okay. Please continue, sir. Okay. So here we are discussing about the dielectric resonator. For the dielectric resonators that I have told that this is a, a piece of ceramic materials. So if we are going to be characterize your materials, as we are the electrical engineers or electronics engineers. We are basically going to be characterize the different materials based on their electrical parameters or electrical properties. And two properties which are going to be very important for us, they are the permittivity and permeability of their materials. So for the permittivity or in general, we are also going to say that the dielectric constant of the material that is going to be play a very important role in case of the dielectric resonators. So when the Richmere has given the concept then he focus on to their materials, which are going to be have their very high dielectric constant. So dielectric constant, which are going to be have the, that is very high value. It means these materials are having the properties. They can hold the electromagnetic power or they can hold the electromagnetic charge. It means we can use these dielectric resonators as a storage device. It means we are going to work as oscillator or filters. But what happened in 1983, when the professor situated along, basically going to be used this DR as a radiator, then he closely observed this electrosonator properties. So he has done two different things. The first thing is that he just removed the enclosure of the electrosonator, which is your conducting boundary. Simply a copper coating is going to be happen onto the electrosonators. Second thing is that the properties of the material in place of your very high electric constant, he reduced the electric constant of the material. So what happened? When we are going to be remove the conducting enclosure and reduce the dielectric constant of their material, then what will happen? This material is going to be lose its property to hold the charge. So what happened when we are going to be feed our dielectric resonator, then what will happen due to this low dielectric constant, the energy is going to be propagated from one atom to the another atom. And it is going to be propagated from one point to the another point. And at the end of the your material, what happened? We are going to be have the dielectric material and then outside is the air. So dielectric material is going to be have your very high dielectric constant as compared to your air. So there is the discontinuity in the boundary conditions. Due to that, the power or EM wave is basically going to be start leakage. And this leakage is nothing as a radiation. And that's why he recognized this capability of their dielectric resonators. And then he has given the name the dielectric resonator antenna or disc antenna or dielectric disc antenna. So if we are going to be say what is DRA, then we can say that DRA is a resonant antenna fabricated from low loss ceramic material. So low loss means if we are going to be characterize our material, then we are going to be have the dielectric constant and loss tangent. So loss tangent, that is the important property of your material, which is going to be directly impact onto the your characteristics of your antennas especially if we are going to be see that is the efficiency or gain of their antenna is closely related to their low loss properties of their materials. If your material is going to be highly lossy in that condition, your efficiency of their system is going to be degraded. Second point, the resonant frequency of DRA, which is the predominantly a function of size, shape and material permittivity. Material permittivity means the electric constant. So we can say that if you want to control or if you want to tune the resonant frequency of any DRA, then you have to focus on to the your three things. What kind of the, your shape is there? What is the size? And what kind of the, your material is there? 
on the basis of these three parameters you can tune the resonant frequency of your dr last it is the efficient radiator in the microwave and millimeter wave frequencies because of this inherent properties because there is no we are we are using the dielectric material as a radiating device so that means there is no conducting part is involved and due to that there is no surface wave loss or we can say that conduction losses are there due to that this is going to be your very high efficiency so that's why i have it is a efficient radiator in case of their microwave and millimeter frequencies so if we are going to see the major advantages of the dra then i have mentions here we are going to be have your four major advantages high radiation efficiency in general it is greater than 95% because there is no conductor losses or surface wave losses because we doesn't have any metallic structure in the antenna here only the ceramic material the piece of dielectric material is going to be used as a radiator so that's why there is no conductor losses and due to that our efficiency is going to be increase second thing the safe flexibility that means you can design a dr in any shape what kind of the shape you are able to fabricate so rectangular cylindrical hemispherical triangular or lots of shapes that you are basically going to be design avoidance of the surface wave is another advantage of dr so if you see the surface wave is a major drawback of your microstrip technologies or microstrip patch antennas so when the frequency is going to be increase for example if we are going to go for their millimeter wave frequencies in that condition due to the conducting surface of the patch antennas the surface wave is going to be create a lot of problem and due to that the efficiency of patch antennas is going to be degraded less than up to 60% or even less so here we doesn't have any i can say that the your conducting material so there is no chance of the your surface wave so that's why these two things makes this antenna much more popular because of they are going to be they are having the your inherent properties of their dielectric materials there is no conductors available in the structure easy to control over size and bandwidth so easy to control over size means if we are going to be see the most fundamental rule of their permittivity and that is basically if we are going to be tune the frequencies which is going to be inversely proportional to the square root of the your the dielectric constant of the your material so if we are going to be increase the dielectric constant of the material it means your size is going to be reduced inversely so that is the reason why we have said that the is the control over size and bandwidth similarly your bandwidth is also going to be inversely proportional to the square root of the your epsilon r that is the dielectric constant so if you are going to be increase the dielectric constant the size of antenna is going to be reduced we are going to be have some disadvantages here also the first the major problem with the your dr is the fabrication as we know that we are using the your dielectric materials or ceramic materials and these ceramic materials is going to be have their native hardness or these materials is going to be have brittleness in nature so if you want to make in a proper shape that machining part is very very complex and costly and that is the major reason why this antenna is not able to compete or not able to overcome the printed circuit antennas because of this major bottleneck in case of the your machinability of the your ceramic materials or dielectric materials second thing is that the dr antennas which are resonant in nature so there if we are going to be see for their mathematical analysis then very few studies are available in terms of their analytical solution so that you are able to get the your exact dimensions or exact properties of the antenna with respect to the your design frequencies and that is the major problem with this drs so here if we are if we are going to be see if we are going to be have proper material which are which you are able to go for the your machinability or you are able to design or you are able to recast that material then you can easily get over this disadvantages so now if we are talking in terms of the your shape then in the case of the your dielectric resonant antennas we are going to be have three fundamental shapes the first one is hemispherical then cylindrical and rectangular so first is the hemispherical so in case of the your hemispherical 
I can say that this antenna is going to be offer a zero degree of freedom. So zero degree of freedom means we are going to be say that as we know that in case of the DRA, we are going to be have only three things which can control the resonant frequency. The first is shape. The second thing is the basically your the dielectric constant of the material that is your relative permittivity. And last one is the basically your size. So here we have fixed the shape. That means M is spherical. So shape is fixed. Second thing is that we are fixing the your epsilon r. So in place of three things, the first one is the basically your shape. The second thing is the basically your dielectric constant. These two things we have already fixed. That means the shape is hemispherical and we have the your only one kind of material that is going to be have your fixed value of a sphere. So now if you want to control the resonant frequency, then we are going to be have only one parameter, which is the radius of this hemispherical structure. So that means if we are going to be change the radius then you can control the resonant frequency and quality factor of the your particular hemispherical DR. So that means it is going to be offer almost zero degree of freedom. Here, as an antenna ingenious, if you're going to be say that there is no much more flexibility is available here, especially in the case of the your hemispherical DR. Now, the second one is the you see your cylindrical DR. In the cylindrical DR, it is basically better in terms of their flexibility because it is going to be offered one extra degree of freedom from zero to one. Why I'm going to be said that from zero to one? Because here, the cylindrical shape, we are going to be at the two different parameters. The first one is your radius of cylindrical. Second one is your height of cylindrical. So the ratio of radius by height, either you can change the radius or you can change the height you can control the resonant frequency of the, your DRA. So we can say that in case of the cylindrical DRA, as antenna engineer prospectives, we can say that it is going to be offered one additional degree of freedom as compared to the, your hemispherical. Now, the third structure is the rectangular DRA. So in the rectangular DRA, it is going to be offered one additional degree of freedom. That means this antenna is going to be offer your two degree of freedoms or we can say this shape is going to be offered to two degree of freedom. So here we can say that we are going to be have the length of the your this rectangular structure let us suppose this is a then the width of the your here and the height or depth of the your this rectangular structure. So here we are going to be have length by width or height by fifth aspect ratio. Whether we can change this one or we can change this one, in both conditions, you are able to control the resonant frequencies. So if you see in terms of the, your flexibility, the rectangular DR is going to be offer highest degree of freedom. That means either you can change length, width, or height, in each cases, you are able to control the resonant frequency of the air. But in this particular lecture, I'm going to be focused on to the your only cylindrical shape. Why I'm going to be focused on the cylindrical shape? Because the cylindrical shape is the most studied shape in terms of their model analysis. As we know that this is a resonant antenna, it means what kind of the your modes which are going to be excited within the DRA, these modes is going to be decided what kind of the properties you are getting from that particular design antenna. So here, the cylindrical antennas is well studied and whatever the different kind of your modes are available, they are explored in the literature in very different dimensions. Second thing is that this kind of your shape is fabrication is very easy. You can simply make the die and you can easily make that particular kind of your shape. And third point, this shape is easily available in the current market. So on these three reasons why I'm going to be focused on the cylindrical DRA or cylindrical shape. So now, as we know that this is the resonant kind of your antenna, 
So here, the modes is going to be very, very important. If we are going to be define the mode, then I can simply say that modes means nothing is the giving the information about your electric and magnetic field distribution inside your structure. So any field distribution means the mode, whether in terms of the, your, your DR inside or the electric field and magnetic field distribution in the, your waveguide. Both are going to be given your similar kind of their definition of the, your modes. So if you are going to be see the, your modes in the cylindrical DR, then normally we are going to be get these three kinds of the, your modes. T, that is your transverse electric, TM, that is your transverse magnetic, and hybrid mode, which is going to be known as your HE mode or EH mode. So here in the T mode, we are going to be have the most fundamental mode, which is T01 delta mode. So T01 delta mode, if we are going to be see the field distribution, especially the electric field distribution, when we are going to be see from the top of the cylindrical DRA, then you can find this complete circle. This kind of the, your field distribution where your fields is moving in a circular manner. So whenever you are going to be see such kind of their field distribution, it means the mode is going to be excited within that DRA is T01 delta mode. And here, this T01 delta mode is going to be have their important property. If this mode is going to be excited, then we can simply say that the far field pattern is going to be broad side, but the maximum radiation is going to be slightly shifted from the your broad side directions. That is a measure. I can say that your guess. For example, if we are going to be design an antenna that is going to be your broad side directional, it means you have to choose that kind of the, your mode which is going to be give the your broad kind broad side of the, your radiation pattern. Or we can say that if you are going to be design a system or antenna system where the requirement of your monopole kind of your radiation pattern, in that condition, you have to find out which mode in the cylindrical DRA is going to be give your monopole kind of your radiation pattern. So the mode analysis, mode nomenclature is very, very important in case of the, your the electric resonator antennas. So based on this mode nomenclature, what kind of your modes you are going to be excited then you can decide what kind of the radiation pattern is going to be radiated by the, your design antenna. Second is the basically TM01 delta mode. So TM01 delta mode is, you can check the radiation pattern. From here, we can say that this pattern is just like giving your fountain like a structure. Your field is going to be excited from here and then they are going to be permitted like this one. So here, if we are able to excite this TM01 delta mode, it means this kind of your mode is going to give the your monopole kind of the radiation pattern. That is the fix. So if you want to excite, if you want to monopole kind of the radiation pattern, then you have to focus how you can excite the your TM01 delta mode inside the your DRA. Normally, what we are going to be do, we are going to be excite the TM01 delta mode. If we are going to be using your coaxial probe feeding at the center position of the, your cylindrical DRA, in that condition, you are able to get the, your TM01 delta mode. Now, the next is the hybrid mode. So, in the hybrid modes, these two are the, your most fundamental modes HEM11 delta modes and HEM12 delta modes. So, here you can see that I have depicted here the different electric field distribution for the, your HEM11 delta mode and HEM12 delta modes. So here, the hybrid modes is going to be give the your broadside pattern. And the difference between these T mode and hybrid mode is that the T mode, the pattern is broadside, but the maximum radiation is going to be shifted. But in case of your hybrid mode, here, the maximum radiation direction is going to be same as a broadside direction. So based on to the, your, this different kind of your mode nomenclature, you have to select which kind of your mode is going to be supported for your particular kind of the radiation pattern or particular kind of the applications. Now, we will move to the your multiband antennas. So the first thing is that why we need the multiband antennas. So now if you see, if we are going to be check the your most portable devices, like your mobile phone, and that we are going to be 
do the lots of things with the help of their only one single mobile phone like we can use our mobile phone as a remote to operate your tv we can use our mobile phone as a wi-fi hotspot to provide the wi-fi to your other devices and we can also use our mobile as a gps coordinate system so that we can check our locations we can also use our mobile as a bluetooth device so that we can control another bluetooth devices with the help of our mobile phone and last the most prime work is the communication so here what happens we are constantly wants to increase the different kind of the your communication services in a single devices that means we required a antenna which is going to be serve all the purposes in a single system and that is the major need of the your multiband antennas this can be understand in different manner let us suppose if we are going to be say that we want to operate our mobile device simultaneously in different operating or different communication band it means there are two things whether we can design our antenna for the particular applications and then we can put all antennas into their single devices so what happened due to that for example i have i want to design a i want to design a mobile phone which is going to be offer your wifi gps bluetooth along with the communication that means all these services is going to be have their different frequency bands that means i required minimum four antennas to provide these four different services so what happen these four antennas makes the system bulky second thing is that if we are going to be put our antennas in a very compact manner then the performance of one antenna is going to be affected to the your second antenna so in that condition your device is going to be bulky and it is not going to be give the your optimized power results and also we are going to use four antennas that means the power consumption is going to be very very high so what is the solution the solution is that we are going to be design a one antenna which is going to be cover the all the four different bands so that our design is going to be compact our system is going to be compact and the power consumption is going to be so we can say that a compactness and complexity both are going to be drastically reduced and due to that the cost effectiveness is going to become comes into the picture so that is the reason why we are going to be focus on the multiband antennas and the communication so now we have discuss about your need of multiband antennas then we have to see what are the different techniques are available in the literature with the help of that we can create this multiband character 6 into the your dielectric resonator antennas so here in the drs we are going to be have these three different techniques the first is the use of multiple drs that means we are going to be use more than one antennas for the particular frequency so what happened due to that we required large number of antennas for example if i am going to be design a device which is going to be support your bluetooth which is going to be support your gps which is going to be support your wifi and which is going to be support your communication that means i need four different antennas to support that device so this kind of your techniques is not very very useful because due to that the structure is going to be very very bulky clear second concept is hybrid drs so the hybrid drs means here we are going to be combine dr along with other resonating structures or other radiators what does it mean here what we are going to be do we are going to be use more than one radiator in a single object so in this structure if you see we are going to be have this annular ring dr which is going to be radiate along with this due to this small circular patch it is also going to be radiate it means here we are going to be get the your two different frequency band or three different frequency band due to these two different resonating structures but here the major 
advantage is that the, the system is going to be very, very compact. But the problem is that as an antenna designer, your DR is going to be radiate with the help of the, your which mode you are going to be excited. And another resonating structure like your patch, we have to focus what kind of the, your modes you are going to be excited so that the radiation properties is going to be same. There is no change in the radiation properties. So hybrid antennas is going to be offered numerous advantages, but the complexity is that what are the different resonating structures you are going to be used. You have to tune those resonating structures in such a manner when they are going to be used as a radiator, they are going to be radiate in live with your designed applications. Otherwise, it will not fulfill your serving purpose. And the last method is the your multi-mode generations or multiple radiating modes generation. What we will do in this case here, as we know that DR is a resonating structure and each mode is going to be decided what kind of your radiation pattern is there. So as we know that in the hybrid modes, we know that we are going to be get the your broad side of kind of the radiation pattern. So if you want to design a directional antenna and which is going to be required your multi-band characteristics, then you can use this. That means you can excite more than one modes in a single DRA. In that conditions, each mode is going to be have their unique properties and unique resonant frequency. And due to that, you can target two or three different frequency bands by exciting the appropriate resonant mode. But here, the major problem is that how to excite two or three resonating modes in a same structure. So this is very important concept and lots of research papers and current research is going to be focused on this particular techniques. So here, the main thing is that first, you know what kind of your modes you want to excite. Second, what kind of your system you require to excite that specific kind of your modes. So that information is very crucial in this particular technique. So here, I'm going to be discuss these four different structures which are based on to the, your, all the three techniques that we have discussed earlier. So the first is structure. So here, this is the symmetric diagram and that is the basically your fabricated structure. So here, I have used the, your two different cylindrical DR along with the, your special C-shaped excitation mechanism. And this is very interesting part of this structure, this particular designing of the C-shapes. And here, this is the optimized dimensions of the, your different dimensions of the, your, this particular antenna. Here, I have used the, your alumina material as a radiator and FR4 as a substrate material. So first, I will see the effect of the your dual C shaped lines. So in the structure, if you see, you're going to be have your two different C shapes. First one is this a small C shape. Second one is this larger C shape. So first I will see what is the effect of these two C shapes structures. So for that purpose, what I have done, I have taken the S11 response in these three different conditions. The first conditions, when we are going to be have only large C shape structures along with the, your this particular design. So here I am going to be said this is the, your jet shape structures because it is look like this one. So that's why I have said the inverted jet shape here, which is, that's why we can say that this is, if you see the side view, then you can like this as your jet shape. So here I have considered your few different cases. In the first case, we are going to be have the, your complete jet shape DRA along with only this large C shape feeding structure. In the second case, we are going to be have the same structure. In place of your large C shape, we are going to be have the smaller C shape. And in the third case, we are going to be have the all the large and small both C case. So when we are going to be analyze all the three conditions, then we see that due to the smaller C shape, we are able to get one special band this one that is 2.7 to 2.98 gigahertz 
and due to the larger c shape we can say that 1 2 3 bands which is 1.25 to 1.35 3.3 and 4.86 so that is the analysis which we are able to get from this particular s11 curve so first i have to check whether all the three bands are coming due to the these c shapes lines or not so for that purpose i have gone through the your field distribution or surface current distribution of these c shapes in that condition, I have checked the surface current distribution in the all the three bands at their resonant frequencies. So in the first band, we are going to be get the 1.45 gigahertz, in second band, 3.54, and in third band, 5.34 gigahertz. And when we have checked that, then we find we will get the TM11 mode, TM21 mode, and half wave mode in the C shapes. And with respect to this one, when we have checked through the, your mathematical modeling, then we find that the frequency of the TM11 mode and the frequency of the, your first loaded mode and second loaded mode, both are basically going to be exactly match with our simulated analysis. So in that condition, we know that whatever the modes, whatever the frequency bands are going to be excited here due to the, your the smaller C shape and larger C shapes, they are perfect. Now, we have to see what is the effect of the your dielectric resonator here. So for that purpose, first we have checked what kind of the your field distribution is going to be happen here. So when we have plotted the your field distribution inside the DR, then we find that we are able to excite T01 delta mode here. When we are going to be see the T01 delta modes and then we have the your mathematical formulation for the T01 delta modes. And when we have put these values in this particular expression, and we find that the value is going to be 7.45 gigahertz, which is nearly to the your designated band. And after that, we have checked the your partial ground plane analysis. So here, what we have done, initially we have considered the your full ground plane structure, and then we are going to be reduce the full ground structure to the partial ground structure by increasing the values here. It will start from the 16 mm and to go up to the 17 mm with different suspects. And when we have done this analysis, then we analyze that in case of your full ground plane, that means dual C shape printed line is almost non resonant, while the resonant peak occurs at 8 gigahertz. What does it mean? It means when we are going to be have your complete ground plane in that condition, these C shapes lines are not working as a radiating elements, are not working as a resonant element. In that condition, only the DR, which is available on the top of these strips, it is going to be radiated. And you can see that we are able to get the, that particular band, which is going to be have the 7.45 gigahertz or nearly to the 8 gigahertz. Second thing, when we are going to be increase the partial ground plane, the length of the partial ground plane, the impedance matching is basically going to be improved due to the C shape lines. What happened when we are going to reduce or decrease from the full ground plane to the partial ground plane due to that what happened? The inductive and capacitance effect due to this partial ground plane that is basically going to be improved the matching with respect to the your dual C shape. And in that condition, these strips is basically going to be work as a resonating elements. So here we can say that this particular antenna is a perfect example of the your hybrid method, where we are going to be have more than one resonating structure in a single DR, in a single DR antenna system that is going to be give the your multiband responses. So here, I have done some little different analysis. What analysis? If you see, we have used your jet-shaped DR. This is your first DR, and that is your second DR. And this distance, that is your offset distance or overlap distance, is D. So here, 
first we want to see that why we why i want to make our system bulky if we are going to be get the same analysis with your single dr then we will go for the your 2 dr for that purpose what i have done i have checked this offset distance and when we are going to be increase our offset distance the bandwidth is going to be increased and that is the reason why we put the your 2 dr and in this z shape because we are able to enhance the bandwidth into the your last band which is created due to the your dr itself and why the bandwidth is going to be created this is because of the air gap which is introduced when we are going to be create their offset between their two dr and due to this er gap the overall effective permittivity of the z shape dr is going to be reduced and due to that the bandwidth of the your design or bandwidth of the your particular frequency band of dr is going to be enhanced next thing is that due to this offset we are able to get the circular polarization why when we are going to put this offset due to this offset what happened we are able to create the 90 degree phase difference between the two orthogonal modes in the z shape dr if we are going to be a single dr in that condition we will not get the your circular polarization if you want a circular polarization then you have to fix in a z shape and this z shape is basically going to be provide the 90 degree phase difference and that we can check it from this particularly field distribution so from here you can see that when the offset distance between the upper and lower dr is going to be increased the phases of the electric field lines changes and due to this change in phase the phase difference between the your upper and lower circular dr is going to be changed and that is going to be get create up to the your 90 degree phase difference and due to this 90 degree phase difference you are able to get the your circular polarization so as a summary i can say that in this particular antenna design we are going to be have two or three different kind of the your unique characteristics first thing is that this antenna is the perfect example of their hybridization where we are going to be use more than two resonating structures to create the multi band so from here you can see that the first band second band and third band all the three bands are created due to the your dual c shape and the last band is basically going to be created due to the your dr which is t01 delta modes here so this is the your i can say that we are going to be have the your four different bands and out of four three is due to the your dual c shaped structures and one due to the your dr next point due to this z shaped drs we are able to get the your actual ratio and which is going to be cover the your same same impedance band with the acceleration band with which is available into the your s parameter that your impedance band is similarly you can see the your gain and radiation efficiencies so your gain and efficiency is greater than in 8 gigahertz because which is due to the your dr and rest band is due to the your micro strip line so in the micro strip technology we know that the gain is reduces because of their losses but in the dr the losses is very very less only the dielectric losses is there there is no conductor and surface velocity so that's why gain is high here then here you can see the your field distribution so if you see the field distribution here all these three is going to be radiated into the your broad side direction and these three if you see we are going to be get the your monopole kind of their structure so here we know that the first three bands is due to the your micro strip line so that's why they all are having their similar properties but the last band is due to the your dr which is the your having your circular polarization so you can see that the change into the your kind of their radiation pattern so that is the major drawback in case of the your hybrid technologies 
Now we have the, your second structure or second design. So here in this design, we have the, your unique kind of the, your excitation scheme. In this excitation scheme, we are going to be have your one small patch, and this small patch is surrounded by the your one annular ring. And then we have the your cylindrical DR, and in the cylindrical DR, we have put your one conformal scale. So the structure is that we are going to be have your modified annular ring kind of the structure to excite the DR. And here the dimensions of the your different antennas. So here you can see that the maximum dimension is 40 cross 40. So we can say that this antenna is almost 4 centimeter by 4 centimeter. This is a one rupees coin. You can see that what is the size of this antenna. It is very, very compact. So now we have to see what is the beauty of this particular structure. So if you remember in the beginning, of the multiband antennas, we have discussed three different techniques. The first technique is the multiple resonators. The second technique is the hybridization or hybrid antennas. And third technique is the multi-resonance or multi-mode generation. So here, I have done this analysis step by step. So the first step is that when we are going to be have the only one small patch, which is connected to the your microstick line and above that we have put the your one cylindrical dia and when we are going to be see to check the different diameters of this small patch circular patch and then we have checked the your s parameter performance so when we are going to be increase the diameter of the your this small patch then we can see that we are going to be get the your two different bands. The first band is this one, and second band is this one. Clear? So now, when we are going to be analyze this particular picture, this particular results, then we can say that the circular patch basically going to be act as a linearly polarized current seed, which provides all the suitable boundary condition for HEM1 to delta modes. And high current densities at the edges create another mode, which is HM1 to delta like. So now here, when we are going to be see the boundary conditions for the hybrid techniques, then we analyze that we are able to create these two modes in this particular structure with the help of this small patch, circular patch. And then we have checked what kind of the field distribution is going to be happen. So due to that, what we have done, we have plotted the near field distribution at the resonant frequency of these two frequency bands. The first is the 5.1 gigahertz and this one is 5.63 gigahertz. So when we see the field distribution, this is the top view and this is the side view. Then we have analyzed that if you check the top views of the both, then it, you can find these are almost similar. That's why I have written, this is perfect HEM1 to delta modes, and this is HEM1 to delta like mode, because the side view is slightly different. So here, one mode is going to be excited at 5.1 gigahertz, another one mode is the 5.63 gigahertz. So here, we are able to excite two different modes, which are going to be have their almost similar kind of your characteristics. So when I have gone through the, your literature that I found that there is no direct formula or there is no direct resonant frequency expressions are available so that we can calculate the resonant frequency to verify whether we are able to get the your similar kind of your pattern or similar kind of your modes in the analytical point of views so that we can validate our simulated analysis. In that condition, I found in the literature that we doesn't have any direct mathematical expression. So what they have done, the HEM one to delta is the higher mode of your HEM one one delta. 
And this higher order modes is basically going to be depend what kind of the ROS factor ratio you are going to be considered of your design antenna. So this 1.85 factor will come from the, your aspect ratio. So here for HEM11 delta mode, the mathematical expression is available. So when we have calculated the resonant frequency of HEM11 delta mode, that is out comes 2.88. And when we put in this particular equation, then we find that HEM12 delta is going to become at a 5.32 gigahertz. So we can say that we are able to get this frequency 5.63 and mathematically or analytically, this value is going to be 5.32. So that's why we are going to be say that the theoretical values is going to be matching with the your or nearby with the your simulated one. Now, after this, we have included one extra ring. So for the extra ring, we have taken into the your second step. So in the second step, what we have done we have considered your two different things. In the first condition, we have taken only the outer ring. In the second condition, we have considered the outer ring along with your vertical strip or conformal strip. Okay. So in the vertical strips, we are going to be considered two different cases with the height of your vertical lift strips we have optimized. And when we are going to be see this analysis, then we find that so here we are going to be other two different things. In this particular structure, we have changed the radius and then see the effect. In second structure, we have fixed the radius and we are changing the height of this conformal strip or vertical strip. So from this particular figure, we have analyzed that when the radius of the annular ring shape printed line is going to be increased, then the impedance matching at the six gigahertz frequency is going to be improved. Second thing is that we have observed that the 2.5 gigahertz span, which is your this given, that is almost non-effective or not affected due to the change in the resonant frequency or due to change in the radius of the your environment. Second thing is that when we are going to be change the height or length of this vertical strip, then we find that the impedance matching is going to be improved in the lower band as well as in the upper band. And then we have checked in the lower band, which is going to be accepted at 2.53 and higher band, which are at 5.91. So in both values, we have plotted our near field distributions. And then we find that at the 2.53, we will get your HEM11 delta mode and 5.91, we are getting the HEM11 delta plus mode. So here, if you see in the previous analysis, we have excited HEM12 delta mode and HEM12 delta like mode. Now, with this modification, we are able to get your HEM11 delta mode and HEM11 delta plus mode. From this analysis, we got that due to this excitation scheme, there is no frequency band. It means here we are going to be get only the different kind of their modes which are going to be excited within the DR. It means whatever the different frequency bands we are going to be excited here, they are only due to their DR. That means we are going to be create or we are going to be satisfied the proper boundary conditions with the modification in the feeding system so that we can create the different modes inside the DR. Now, when we are going to be combine all the three things, that means the circular patch, then annual ring micro step line, and then the vertical line. And when we are going to be do it, then we find one extra frequency band here, that is your 3 gigahertz, 3.5 or 3.8 gigahertz frequency band. And this band is basically due to the your another mode going to be created here, that is your TM01 delta mode, which we have verified with your frequency of it, with your electric field distribution. So here we are going to be get 
three to four different kind of their modes are excited within the DR and due to different modes, we are going to be got their different frequency bands here. So now you can check it here. That is the final simulated and experimental results. So first mode we have got due to their HEM11 delta mode, second TM01 delta mode, then HEM12 delta like mode, HEM12 delta mode, and HEM11 delta plus modes. So here you can see that we will get their three different frequency bands. First is this one, second is this one, and third one is this one. And your third band is almost very wide band, which is going to be started from their 4.9 gigahertz to almost 5.98 gigahertz and which is due to that we are able to excite all these modes very closely to each other and this concept is known as your mode merging concept and we are going to be use this concept to make the system wideband so here we are going to be have two different techniques to get the multiple or multiple or multiband characteristics along with the, your wideband performance here. And here, this is the basically your gain and addition efficiency. So you can see that we are the, that they are good gain and that is the field distribution. So now you check it very closely. So at the 3.4 gigahertz, we are able to excite the your TM01 delta mode. So you can check it. At 3.4, you are able to get your monopole kind of pattern. See it here. At the 00, zero or 180, your no radiations and almost omnidirectional pattern into your YZ plane. So that means at 3.4 gigahertz, we are going to be get your monopole kind of radiation pattern. And rest band is HEMAD or TM or T01 delta. So you can check it here. This is the T01 delta mode. So you can see that broadside pattern, but the maximum is going to be slightly tilted towards your broadside. Broadside means zero, zero, but it is going to be tilted towards here. Similarly here, but check it here. But for the HEM, we are going to be get there exactly the same. Okay. So that is the major problem with your mode merging concept. But here we can say that the almost the T01 delta or HEM modes are basically going to be have a similar kind of addition pattern that is your broadside. So we can use this kind of a concept. So here, this is the performance comparison with the already published structures. Now, the next structure here. So this is again is a multi band structure and the Beauty of this structure is going to be lie with this particular kind of the slot which we have designed here. Our main task is that we want to create the your multiple frequency bands so that we can support the your multi devices or multiple I can, services like Bluetooth, Wi Fi, GPS, wireless communications, all these things. And for that purpose, what we can do, our task is that either we can use a multiple DRS, which is not possible because it is going to make the system bulky. Then we are having only two techniques, either hybrid techniques you can use. That means there are more than one resonating structure or mode margin. So hybrid, the major problem is that the, the consistency in the tradition part. Then we are going to have a mode margin. So in the mode generation or multi-mode generation techniques. The main thing is that what kind of the modes you are going to be excited. So for each mode, we are going to be have some boundary condition and we have to satisfy. So what are the different kind of the, your, I can say that the, the excitement schemes we are proposing here, they are basically going to be support the boundary conditions, which is required to excite the different kind of your modes inside the cylindrical DR. So now here, the first is the basically your design or evolution of their proposed structure. So the evolution of their proposed structure, what I have done, 
initially i have taken this step one where you can see that cylindrical dra is there and that is going to be excited by the your simple micro step in the second step in terms of your simple micro step line we have put the your plus kind of your things in third step we are going to be have the your this circular shape slot in this circular shape slot i have introduced one l shape strips here and in step 4 i have removed two l shape materials or l shape part from this particular slots so then we are going to get the your this particular kind of your slots here here we have plotted the s11 in all the four steps so when we are going to be analyze this s11 then we find that due to this circular aperture along with your plus shape micro strip line is going to be able to create different six different peaks which is going to be indicate six different mode patterns inside the cdr so here you can check it one two three four five and six so now these six bands is due to the your six different mode patterns why i am going to be said that because i am going to be check the six different frequency points one two three four five and six all the six thousand frequencies the near field distribution when we are going to be check the near field distribution then you find that initially at 1.1 gigahertz we are able to excite hgm 100 times and at 1.5 gigahertz, we are able to get the HM1 1 delta plus modes. And that is going to be verified with respect to your mathematical analysis here. After that, I'm going to be check onto the your another four different bands. So we are going to be get the four different ones 2.04, 2.4, 2.3, and 2.6. And then we are going to be check all these modes. Then we find HM12 delta like mode, HM12 delta mode, HM13 delta mode, and HM14 delta mode. All the modes, when we are going to be checked with respect to their mathematical expression, then we find that each mode is going to be perfectly matched with respect to their theoretical analysis. So here, our analysis is going to be clear. That means, what are the different six peaks we are analyzing into their S parameter curve? they are due to the your six different modes excited within the your cylindrical dr it means it is the clear cut example of the multi modes generation technique after that i have checked what happened in the your circular polarization concept so here when we are going to be see initially when we are going to be have your circular strip or circular shape patch in that condition there is no circular polarization in the step three when we put this l shape strip with your this patch circular patch then we are able to get the circular polarization in the initial two bands and when we are going to be cut these two l shape structures from the circular shape then we are going to get the your all the four bands are going to be circularly polarized so here we can say that the tilted l shape slot is accountable for cp waves in first two bands that is your 1.1 and 1.5 and when we are going to be remove these two slots l shape perturbed in the your circular aperture creates the cp waves in 2.3 and 2.5 gigahertz so here, the main beauty of this structure is that it is the your quad band and all the four bands are supported by the your circular polarization. And that's why this antenna is going to be unique in terms of the your designing as well as their results. And then we have go for its experimental verifications. And from that, we can check it, we are able to get the your 
almost matching result with respect to their simulation. So we can say that we are going to get the your 21, 12, 27, and 7% bandwidth in the your 1 gigahertz, 1.5 gigahertz, 2.1 gigahertz, and 2.65 gigahertz. All these bands are due to the your HM11 delta, HM11 delta plus, HM12 delta, and HM13 delta and 14 delta. Again, if you see here in the third band, which is the your wide band in nature, that is going to be have the 1.89 to 2.48. Here we have excited three different ones, HM12 delta mode, HM12 delta like mode, and HM13 delta mode. So here, if you see, all these modes are very nearly or very closely excited. And that is the reason these all modes are going to be merged in a single band. And that's why we are going to get your wide band structure. So here, we can say that the mode merger technique is going to be useful for your wide band concept mode generation, multiple mode generation techniques is going to be go for your multi-band generation. And then we have checked our simulation result with the measure for the Excel ratio and gain, and they are going to be properly matched with our simulated one. And then the four fields, which are completely matched. And after when we have checked it, then this is a unique antenna which is going to be used your aperture excitation which are going to be have your four different bands and all the four different bands is going to be have your circular polarization or different sense of polarization now this one is the last structure for the your multiband category so here what i have done i have used this unique size shape of the your structure for the excitation of TR. So again, here our task is that we want to satisfy the boundary conditions so that we can generate more numbers of their mode in a single DR. So for that purpose, we have used such kind of their structure. So here, this is the evolution kind of things. Initially, we have a simple micro step line. Then we have to add one conformal line. And after that, we have increased add one this half line and then we have cut the your complete half circle here which is going to be cut the your exactly size here. and when we have plotted the s for one curve here then we find that this simple micro strip line basically going to be act as a magnetic dipole and which is the excellent condition for creating the your hm11 delta mode and when we are going to be add this vertical strip that is going to be provide your better impedance matching due to that our coupling is going to be improved and due to this coupling what happened our bandwidth is going to be improved after that first we have checked the different field distribution so when we have checked the field distribution at 2.77 gigahertz then we find that we are able to get their HM11 data modes. And that is the exactly same thing. Exactly same things mean, what are the different kind of their excited scheme we have choose that is giving the indication that the HM11 data mode is going to be created. And when we have plotted their field distribution, we find that it is perfectly HM11 data modes. And that is also going to be verified. Simulation 2.77 and exp Mathematical is 2.81, which is very closely matched. And after that, we have checked what happened at their higher frequencies. Then we will get their HM12 delta modes at 4.65 gigahertz. So when we analyze our antenna 3, then we find that for creating the your orthogonal modes in the single radiator, we have to excite two different points to get the angular separation 90 degree. And HM12 delta mode is basically going to be created to do this quarter type of their printed line. After that, we have again checked the field distribution at 4.7 gigahertz to confirm whether HM12 delta mode is excited or not. And from this figure, you can clearly say that we have excited the HM12 delta mode. And then we have checked our final structure that is your antenna D or antenna 4. In this, we are going to be have your two quarter pole lines so here you can see that 
the first condition when we are going to the CDR with only one quarter line, that means when we are going to be have this structure, clear? In the second condition when we are on the two quarter lines, that means this particular structure. And here, two quarter lines, but this, if you see, the this is going to be your complete half circle. So this complete half circle is going to be have some radiator, some radiation or some radius. And then we are going to be change the radiation from four to six. Then what the effect of? And finally, we have put the your a tag. So when we are going to be do this analysis, then we get three different bands, one, two, and three. So this band we have initially analyzed, this band we have initially analyzed because this is due to the your one, two delta mode. This is HM11 delta mode. We get the your another band that we have checked and we found that it is going to be get the your TM01 delta mode. And that is perfectly true because when we are going to be put such kind of your structures, that is going to be make the your parallel addition of two horizontal plates that will dipole. That is mirror image of your fitting structure. And due to that, this fitting structure is going to be act as a vertical dipole. And this vertical dipole is the necessary boundary condition to create or generate that TM01 delta mode. So that's why we will get the TM01 delta. So here we are going to get three different modes HM11 delta, HM12 delta, and TM01 delta. So it is a triple bond structure which is going to get there three different bands here. You can check it here. First band, second band, and three band. First band, HM12 delta. Second band, TM021 delta. Third band, HM12 delta. Similarly, you can check the organ radiation patterns also. Then the radiation pattern. And here, this is antinity, which is good. So now, if you conclude all the four antennas, then we can say that the antenna A is the example of hybrid techniques, but B, C, D is going to be example of your multi-mode generations. In C and D, we are able to get your multi-merge or mode merger techniques to make the system bindment also. So if you see what kind of the different or what kind of the research can be done in the future that I have discussed here. If you see, whatever the different modes which we have excited here, they are all the your higher modes in case of your HM12 delta. Now, if you are able to create some new type of the your excitation scheme so that you can get the your or you are able to excite some more higher order of modes like EM01 delta, like HM14 delta, HM15 delta, in that condition, you are able to create more numbers of the your frequency bands. So that is still is unexplored. If you want to, if you can go and try. Second thing is that all these structures where the DR height is going to be almost 8 to 10 nano. So it is going to be bulky. So you can make this compact and put this multiband character system combined. And that is going to be the green area for the, your research communication. Second thing is that we can go for the safe modification so that the overall, we are able to reduce the quality factor so that our antenna is going to be better performance. Or the last is we can go for the your multiple input and multiple output technology to make the your multiple concept. So now we will start about your second part, which is the basically your wide body structures. So first, what is the fundamental requirement of your wide band? Why we need the wide band? So here we are going to be have these three fundamentals. The first is impedance matching. So whenever you are going to be design any white band structures, you have to see that minus 10 dB is the performance threshold for the S parameters or the flushing coefficient curves that must be followed. Then phase linearities, it is important point to make the system clean. And last is the radiation pattern. That means when we are going for the your wide band structures, your pattern is going to be consistent. Otherwise, there is no meaning of that antenna for your wide band reasons. Now, what are the different techniques are available into your literature? So in the literature, we are going to be having a stacking or multi-segmentation technique using differential feeding mechanism and modified shape of DRA by using concept of hybrid DRA, sectoring and splitting, and fractal concepts. These are the six different techniques are available in the literature 
to get the wide band response. Like here, I have told you they are having a demo. This concept is similar to your multi-band concept. But here, what we are going to be do, we are going to be use two different resonating structures. And the thing we have to check it, both the resonating structures going to be excite or going to be radiate or going to be generate the mode, which is are very near to each other. In that conditions, both modes are going to be merged together and our system is going to be wide-fed. Now, the introduction part here, in general, if you find the literature, we are going to be get the your lots of wide band antennas, especially I can say that they are monopole kind of their antennas. In this kind of their antennas, what we are going to be doing, we are going to be use the monopole antenna, which is nothing is a simple coaxial structure, and that is going to be loaded with your DR. And this is one of the most important concept in case of the, your DR that is published by the, your Antar group in 2005. Here, I have given some reference designs of the different ultra vibrant structures based on to the, your monopole kind of the, your patterns. So from here, you can check it. All these are basically going to give their monopole tradition pattern. And one thing is going to be common if you see, all this DR is going to be excited at your center. When we are going to be excited at the center, that means we are going to be excited at the M01 delta mode. It means it's a monopole kind of your structures. You can check it in each and every conditions. So when we are realize or to do this literature survey, then we can find that Whatever the structures we are using, these are designed on the conventional method, but the monopole is going to be act as a feed as well as a trading element. That means it is the perfect example of their hybrid antennas, where we are going to be use this monopole as a radiator along with as a excitation scheme for the TR material. So that means we are going to be at your two different resonating structures. One is the monopole along with your DR. And this concept, your hybrid concept, is basically going to be enhance the bandwidth significantly. But the problem is that these systems are bulky in size and require more space. So, first, I will going to discuss these two different techniques. The first one for the ultra wide application. Second one is going to be using a fractal approach for the wide band structures. So here, this is a somewhat typical structure, which have your very different kind of their analysis. Here we are going to be use three different DR. One is your annular DR. Then we are going to be have your two cylindrical DR of the different sizes. And it would mean that we have created the your air gap that you can check it here. This is the air gap. Along with this, we have used the tilted c shape structure here. And this is also going to be to create the very important role in the final design or final performance of this structure. Let us see check one by one. So initially, we are going to be have the your c shape structure. The first when we are going to be have your complete ground plane, and final, when we are going to be have your partial ground planes. So when we are going to be do this analysis, then we find that we are able to get your one frequency band here. That means one single notch. It means this C shape slot is resonating. And when we check it, it is TM11 mold, which is going to be excited at 7.09. Now we have tilted this annular printed line or c shaped line. So from this position to this position, and then we have modified this micro step line in your step structure. So when we have done this kind, then we get two more resonance are looking with your fundamental modes, and also the impedance matching is going to be better. So then we have to realize what are the different modes is going to be excited. Then we see TM11 is going to be excited initially. And when we are going to get the half wave mode, and another is a TM21 mode. So here we can see that we get three different modes 7.3, 3.3, and 10.4. Due to this tilted 
annular separated line in short form I have sent your TAPA. That means we are going to be get the three different frequency bands due to this particular concept. Now we have checked the, the state of the structure along with your DR. So initially we have seen the TAPL without CDR. That means we are going to get the three different band. One, two, and three. Clear? After that, what I have done? I have loaded one your single DR, then the annular DR along with the your with your second DR and third one is your annular structures. So we can say that we are going to be have your four different conditions. In first condition, no CDR. In second condition, with CDR. In third condition, we make the CDR with annular structure. And last one is the modified CDR. That means we are going to use a combination of your two annular, rings, annular DR along with your CDR. So here from this analysis, we get two different modes, two different present frequencies. And when we have analyzed it, then we find that we are able to get the T01 delta mode and HEM11 delta modes. And the same thing, when we have checked it and we find it is correct, that means we are able to get the HEM11 delta mode and TM12 delta mode. Now, our task is that we want to create the wideband concept or ultra wideband. It means three bands we have created due to the your uh, that is tilted and repented line and two bands we have created due to the your the modified cylindrical structure. Modified cylindrical structure means the annular structure inside the annular structure we have created one cylindrical DR. Now we have modified this CDRA and make this as a dumbbell shape. So what we have done we have Initially, we have this annular ring and then this annular structure we have filled with your second cylindrical DRA and then at the top of cylindrical second cylindrical DRA, we have put your another cylindrical CRA. So it means it is going to be made as a dumbbell shape. So when we are going to do this stacking, that is your another alumina ceramic on the top of the staffron ceramic, Due to that, it is going to be made as a dumbbell shape. And when we are going to be do it, then what happened? The T01 delta mode is going to be shifted toward the, your lower side due to the stacking of the, your top CDRA. And when this teflon weight CDRA and the presence of non-metallic surfaces at the lower boundaries of the upper CDRA, it creates a favorable environment. That means it is going to be provide the, your sufficient condition to satisfy the boundary condition for the HM12 delta modes. So this structure is going to be create two different things. First, it is going to be shift your T01 delta mode resonant frequency. Second, it create the your new mode, which is your HM12 delta mode. So here you can see that we get the T01 delta mode that is shifted towards your 5.5 gigahertz due to the loading of the top CDR and HM12 delta is going to be created into the, your cylindrical DRA because of this loading. And that we have verified through the, your theoretical analysis. Now, when we have checked the measured and summation result, then you can see it due to this stacking, the overall antenna performance or reflection coefficient is going to be optimized and all these modes are going to be merged together so that we are going to be get the your complete wideband structure. So here we can say that we have used three different techniques. The first is hybrid techniques. Second thing is that we have created numbers of modes with multiple mode. Third is we have combined all the modes. That is a mode merging techniques. Due to that, we are able to get the 3.2, 3 to 10.98, which is the FCC guidelines for the ultra wideband radiations. So here we can say that by merging three concepts, we are able to get the wideband structures and that is going to be fulfill the purpose of our requirements. Now, the third structure here, 
here we have used your different techniques, which is known as your fractal techniques. Fractal means the self similarity, the structures which is having their tendency to repeat themselves. So here we are going to be have this the, your fractal structures, and this is structure basically going to be inspired from your Hindu mythology, and we can say that uh, during our fractal analysis, when we are going to be do the your literature reviews. Then, in place of the your, I can say that the your, our antenna terminology, I have shifted towards the your different journals from their different backgrounds like mechanical engineering, civil engineering. So, I want to learn what are the different kind of your fractals structures are available in the universe. During our this analysis, I found one paper which is written by the your one Australian scientist based on to the your temples available in Khazraho. So when he has given the analysis, then he has shown three to four different kind of the your fractal geometries based on to the your inside portion of the your our temples that is available into the your. I can say that the in the Khazuraho, and from that papers I got this concept, and I have analyzed here in our electrosymmetry and this. So here, what I have done, I have taken the your these seven different cylindrical TRS and put it in a proper manner so that it is going to repeat themselves, which is going to give their fractal kind of their feel here. So first, I have to check how it is basically going to be analyzed. So what I have done initially, I have taken the your main cylindrical DR, which we have excited at the your center position from the coaxial probe. It means we are trying to generate or create the TM01 delta mode. That is why default condition. So initially, we have taken the only single DR. That means this is the ground plane, and this is a single DR, and we have excited at the center position by the coaxial probe, and we get the your TM0 and 1 delta modes, which is perfectly fine. Up to this one, there is no problem at all. We are able to get it. So, this first cylindrical DR, we have given the name as a parental CDR. Now, when the fractal concept is going to be come into the picture, that means we are going to be repeat the same shape. That means if we are choosing the cylindrical shape, that means if we are going to be move from the zero iteration to first iteration, that means we are going to be use the second cylindrical DR in such a manner so that it is going to repeat their properties. So when we have adjoined the second CDR in adjacent to the your parental CDR, this is your second structure and that we have put in contact with the your parental CDR. And when we have analyzed this one, then we found that due to this adjacent placing of the your second DR with your parental DR, if you see the TM0 delta 1, they are going to be X, get the, your, this kind of the, your distribution. Clear? So that means the field is going to be excited here and they are going to be terminated here. So due to this field expressions, what happened, we are able to get the your HM11 delta mode in the your adjacent CDR. And then we have verified the mathematical operations, mathematical equations, then we find the your exactly same resonant frequencies. Now, we have to optimize how the maximum coupling is going to be happen from the parental to the your adjacent, then from adjacent to the your next adjacent. For that purpose, we have used this mutual coupling concept where we are going to be represent your L1C1 as a resonator for the your parental CDR and L2C2 for the your adjacent CDR. And when we have checked, then we have found the mutual inductance or coupling factor for your parental to the your adjacent one. And due to this mathematical analysis, we have found that, you check it here, we have found that the radius and height of the both cylindrical DR, that is your parental and adjacent cell, they are going to be play a crucial role to get the maximum coupling. If coupling is going to be maximum, in that case, the adjacent CDR is going to be become a 
excellent radiator because that is going to be favorable conditions for exciting the HGM11 delta mode there. Otherwise, if it is a weakly coupled, then the adjacent antenna is not going to be give the, your proper results. So from this particular analysis, we have optimized our all the DR structures. And due to that, we can say that we are going to be get their different radi radius with respect to their original one. In the similar manner, we will go to their second and third radiations. That you can check it here. This is our zero iteration. This is our first iteration, second iteration, and third iteration. And when we have analyzed it, then this is the zero iteration, first iteration, second iteration, and third iteration. So from here, when we have checked it, when we are moving from the zero to your third iteration, then the bandwidth of your antenna is going to be enhanced. And this is due to the your decrease into the your volume to surface area or increase into their volume to surface area. What does it mean? As we know that DR is the your antenna which is radiating from the surface. So here, if you see, we are going to be have the only top surface and the side surface. When we are going to be increase the number of DRS, the surface, that is the top surface is going to be increased. That means the radiation area is going to be increased. So that's why I'm going to the volume to surface ratio is going to be increased. Due to that, the radiation is going to be increased, size is going to be increased, and the bandwidth is going to be increased. So here we can say that the impedance bandwidth and peak gain is increasing of each iteration. And the reason behind the bandwidth enhancement is, is the decrease in the volume to surface area of the antenna structures. And for the peak gain enhancement is the increase in your effective aperture area. Then we have measured the antenna performance and that is going to be the your excellent with respect to the your simulated one. Now we have discussed these two different techniques, fractal techniques and the your hybrid plus mode merging techniques. Now the next technique is the multi-segment or stacking technique. So here we are going to be have their strong coupling because what are the materials, what are the different kind of the your uh, we can say the DR you are going to be placed on one to above that is going to be characterized by their dielectric materials. So if we are going to be get the your one to strong coupling that means you use the your high permittivity DR. But if you want to the wide band you require the low permittivity DR. It means for getting the wide band you require the low permittivity material for getting high gain that means the strong coupling you require the high dielectric constant material. So when we are going to be use this multi-segment and multi-stacking concept, we are have to balance these two things. That means what you want, whether you want to increase the bandwidth or you want to increase the gain or you want to balance between them. In that condition, you have to define some rules. Second is the splitting or sectoring. So what happened when we are going to be split or sector one antenna, that means we are going to be increase the effective radiation area. And due to that, the bandwidth is going to be increased. So here we are going to be use a similar concept. Here, first I'm going to be use your sectoring concept, and then I'm going to be use your multi-segmentation. So that by combining these two techniques, we are going to be achieve your wide bandwidth. So initially, I have the one cylindrical DR, so we can use the your beta in three different things whether you can use your pi 2 pi by 3 or pi by 2 if you use a pi that is your half cdr 2 pi by 2 that is your trisector dr and pi by 2 that is your quarter sectors and you can increase it also so here i have used your quarter sectors that means we have choose your one dr and we can cut into your four piece and single piece is going to be known as your quarter cdr so what i have done i have cut all the dr in four parts and then i have excited as a center from the your center from the coaxial probe. That means I am going to be making the favorable condition to generate the OTM01 delta modes. And after that, I have applied the multi-segment syntaxing. That means I am going to be put the different DR with different dielectric constants. And then I have told this antenna as a multi-element, multi-segment, quarter CDR. That is the approach which we have developed here. So this is the, your multi-element, multi-segment, quarter CDRA, where we have used your three different kinds of your materials to 
increase the bandwidth of the antennas. So here, when we are going to be do this analysis, then we find that there are some rules, general guidelines when we are going to be follow the, your segmentation techniques along with your sector. So when we are going to be do it, then first step we find that design the sector DRA for desired frequency by keeping the aspect ratio in between this one. So if you want to go for the, your wideband structures in that condition, you will go for your sectoring between 0.1 to 1. If you are going to be go your sectoring more than one, that is your aspect ratio more than one, in that condition, you will not get the your proper wideband structure. Second thing is that the dielectric constant of your lower layer, that is your initial layer, that which is just contact with your ground plane, should be always less than the dielectric constant of your upper layer. It means the lower layer must be lowest possible dielectric constant. Second, for dual segmentation, lower layer aspect residue should be two and upper segment aspect should be greater than one. When we are going to be have your more than two layers in that condition, we require the dielectric constant between the your highest dielectric constant to the your lowest dielectric constant. Similarly, the aspect ratio of your layer height should be in ascending order masses the your lowest aspect ratio should be kept at the your lower end. That means when we are going to be towards the upper side, your radius, your height is going to be smaller. The number of layers can be increased to get the desired bandwidth, but the antenna performance will be affected. In general, we have carried out up to your three layers because the fabrication complication increases and up to three layers, we are able to get the your proper enhancement in bandwidth. When we are going to be increased more than three layers, then the bandwidth improvement is there, but it is not significant. That's why we have restricted our analysis up to the your three layers. So when we have done this analysis, initially we are going to do three layers quarter cylinder and three layers, uh, I can say that they are MEMS QCDR. And in that condition, you can check it. For the MEMS QCDR, we are going to get there from 5.1 to your 7.6. And for your only sectoring techniques, then you can see that the difference into your percentage band with here. As we know that these are the basically your TM01 delta mode, which is clearly excited here. You can check it here. In one plane, you will get the omnidirectional, in another plane, you will get your monopole directions. And that is your last design here for your wideband structures. Here we are going to use more than two techniques to cut your results. This technique is, I can say, inspired from our earlier structure that we are going to use your tilted annular printed lines along with your jet shapes. This is a similar kind of structures, but that is for your wideband structures. So here again, we are going to be see the effect of the ground plane. Then we find that due to this one, we are going to be get the your, when we are going to a full ground plane, the angular shape micro step time doesn't radiate, that means it is not, it is going to be your non resonance in nature. But when we are going to be reduce the ground plane, it is as working as a resonant facility. Exactly the same way that we have discussed earlier. Similarly, we will get the OTM11 mode due to that 3.75 gigahertz is there. Second is that we have checked the impedance band that is going to be enhanced into their top band due to the diameter. That is the predefined nature of the ODR. If you increase the diameter, the bandwidth is going to be increased. Then we have seen what kind of your different modes we are going to be excited into the DR. Then we check we are able to get the TM01 delta mode. And due to that, this TM01 delta mode is going to be excited due to the, your, this particular arrangement, the jet shape structures into this one. After that, we have seen what are the different kind of the modes we are able to excite it again. Then we found TM21 due to the your this shifting into the your initially we are going to be have the your annular ring instruction. After that, we have changed the position of your micro strip line. And due to that, we are able to enhance another that is your TM21 that you can clearly check it here. And due to this shifting, we are able to get the your T01 delta. That means in the DR, we are going to get the two different modes, T01 delta and TM01 delta. Due to this shifting, 
we get the two different one tm11 that is already there tm21 we are able to extract that means we are going to get the four different modes two due to their micro step line two due to their dr and all they are going to be combined together so that we are able to get their wide band structure so we can check it here we are able to get the wide band structure from 3.49 to 10.9 gigahertz so we can say that here in the first structure we are using the your hybrid techniques where due to the your tilted lines we are going to tm11 tm21 and hybrid dipoles and due to the your dumbbell ship cdr it will tz1 delta hm1 mil delta and hm12 delta this structure is for ultra wide second we have used your fractal structure form fractal techniques where we are able to get the your wide band that is up to the 45 percent band in the third structure is a sector approach where we are going to be get their 38 4 percent and last one again is the combining of their hybrid along with their mode merging techniques so these are the different references and thank you very much so now if you have any question then please let me know thank you very much sir Yes. Yeah, uh, sir. Students have few uh, participants have few queries. So, Satyendra, please uh, share your screen. Uh, okay, having the questions that uh, we have uh, summarized. Is my screen visible? Yeah, yeah it is visible, Satyendra. So, yeah. So, uh, okay. So the first is uh, what kind of the, your material we are going to be used to stick our DR with either metal substrate or PCB. Actually, we are going to be used different kind of your adhesive. We have tried from the, your Fabicube to the, your another laboratory grade adhesive that is available into the, your markets. And all are almost working fine. But the main thing is that if you're going to be used the adhesive, which is going to be very thick in that condition, the antenna performance is going to be change in that condition when we are going to be go for the your simulation then you have to check the the dielectric properties of your adhesive otherwise there is no problem at all uh, second is it is possible to combine cylindrical and spherical cavity i don't understand what do you mean by this one cylindrical dr with the spherical cavity or something else this question is not clear for me uh, if any part, like the participant who has asked this, he or she can unmute and uh, please clarify. Yeah, Mr. Rahul Lal. Uh, sir, uh, uh, good morning, sir. Uh, see, my question is, uh, that is if we combine two structures, that is uh, cylindrical, spherical, uh, something, or what sort of mode are we supposed to expect? Actually, that is, yeah. The <clears throat> generation of mode is very tricky thing. The generation of mode is basically depending upon to the your what kind of your boundary conditions you are going to be satisfied. Just like I have explained here, if you want to exp you want to in a, create the your TM01 delta mode, that means you have to create the your vertical dipole, electric dipole. So when we are going to be merged to a different kind of their structures then you have to check what kind of the, your boundary conditions you are going to be satisfied there. So while merging toward three different kinds of the structures will not get the, your any good result until unless you know what kind of your boundary conditions they are going to be satisfied. So you have to take care when you are going to be merged to different kinds of their structures, whether they will satisfy your boundary condition or not. Just like your conical structure, if you see, in the conical structures, they are going to be get the your HEO, HEM11 delta mode along with your T01 delta mode and TM1 delta mode. But it is depending upon to your different kind of the your excitation methods. That is excitation schemes. They are they have designed their unique excitation schemes. Due to that, they are able to satisfy the boundary conditions for a specific resonant modes. Only then they are able to excite it. So combining is not going to be give the your proper results i think so okay now the next question is sir why do we represent modes with delta instead of number actually here in the dielectric resonator antennas we are if you are going to be see in the cylindrical structures we are going to be have your three different 
points or cylindrical coordinate structures we are going to get the radial then azimuthal and elevation or we can say that they are h r and phi so here the tm or t or whatever is this 0 1 1 or 0 1 delta so delta sign is basically going to be represent this the suffix one, two, three, whatever is there, they are going to be represent their complete half cycle. But when this complete cycle is not going to be happen in that particular structure, then we are going to be represent the delta. This delta value is going to be represent greater than zero to less than one. It can be any value between this zero to one. Why we are going to put a delta? Because the complete half circle is not going to be taken place during that particular structure. That's why we are putting the delta here. Second thing, last next question is create the multiband using the cutting slots in patch and ground. So this question is related to the your I think microscopic patch and thinner, not the DR. So cutting slots in patch and grounds definitely. If you see the your slot antennas or patch antennas, what we are going to be do the slot is basically going to be work as a radiators or aperture radiators. If you see in our multi mode generations, we have used your aperture. Due to this aperture, we are able to create some resonances. So definitely with what, where the slot is going to be happen, that is going to be decided whether the slot is going to be radiate or not. The technique to select the position and dimensions, no. That you have to go for the, your extensive simulation by optimizing their position and dimensions. There is no proper mathematics is available. Like if you go for your cylindrical patch, if you go for your rectangular patch, that patch diamonds based on that, you can calculate the resonant frequencies. But that, was, that patch is going to be give the same result in your structures, it is not always true. That is going to be given based on to the other, other parameters or other structures that is available in your antennas. How to know hybrid modes are excited in DR antennas? The best way is that you check the your near field distribution. So when you are going to be see the near field distribution, by checking the near field distribution, you can analyze whether it's a T mode, TM mode, or HE mode. Second thing is that if you are good in terms of boundary conditions, then you analyze what type of the your excitation mechanism is going to be behave, whether your magnetic dipole, electric dipole, horizontal dipole, vertical dipole, what kind of the your uh, that the excitation scheme is going to be behave. Based on that, you can see which boundary condition is going to be satisfied, whether it is going to be useful for the, your that particular mode or not. Sir, can, sir, can I interfere, yeah. sir? Yes. Sir, actually, we will be selecting the dimension of the substrate and the DRA, sir. Hmm. I shall be using some mathematical like, uh, equations. Hmm. And next, we are going to give, feed either some hybrid techniques or some other techniques. Okay. So normally we de we de design for one uh, mode or something like that, and we'll get it. So hmm. based on the S11 results, we'll be getting the which to uh, so what are the different frequencies it is going to uh, we are going to get it. Sir. Yes. So how do I know that in that frequency that mo particular mode is excited? No, that because we have designed your antenna that for that particular frequency. Uh, it may sometimes it may radiate have another frequency also or not. Sir. No, for another frequency, the thing is that, for example, you have designed your antenna for HM11 delta mode, and that mode is excited at 3.1 gigahertz. But when you have done the simulation, then you yeah. see at the four or five gigahertz, you get the, your another frequency band. Here, yeah. so you want to check why this another frequency band will come into the picture. The analysis is that first you see the, your near field distribution, and from the near field distribution, you see whether it is due to the, your any particular kind of your mode which is excited here or it is the higher order modes of your parent modes. So for example, if we have uh, excited HCM11 delta mode, the next higher mode is HC12 delta mode, HCM12 delta mode. Then you have to go for your mathematical uh, verifications. From that, you can check whether the second mode which appear at your higher frequency is HCM12 delta mode from your mathematical analysis or not. If it is not, then you go for your further higher mode, there is HM13 delta mode or HM14 delta modes. Clear? In this way, you are basically going to be checked which mode is going to be excited by checking the electric field distribution and by verifying with the help of your mathematical analysis. Yes, sir, uh, regarding you had shown this E field distribution at particular frequencies and all, you know, sir, previously hmm. in some of these slides. So, how do we analyze using that uh, field diagram section? 
Oh, for that purpose, I think I will suggest you first you go for the old Pozar book. In the Pozar book, they are going to be have your cylindrical waveguide and, rect uh, and rectangular waveguide. From that, you get your fundamental identification of the, your different, the, I can say that your prefix. What do you mean by your one? What do you mean by your two? What is meaning by your delta? Clear? Okay. Otherwise, it is difficult for me to give the clear cut idea here. For example, I can say it, but can I use my screen? Yes, I told that only one suffix means it is a one half cycle in a particular direction. Yeah, in Sir, you can screen, uh, use your screen now. So then the just a minute and yeah opening my slides yeah i need the permission to share it uh satender please uh, stop my please sharing sir. allow sir to share the screen okay okay sir. yeah So like here, if you see this for here, HEM11 delta mode, clear? So 11 delta means we are talking in terms of the, your, I can say that the, your cylindrical structure, clear? So 11 delta means one is going to be give for the, your R, one for phi, another for the, your Z, clear? So here yeah. you can see that, that is the, one second, full screen. Now this is clear. Yes, sir. So here you can check it. This is going to be give your complete half cycle. That means it is going to be give your one. Second, you can check it. That is, I have given your side view. If you're going to the top view, you will again going to be get your complete half cycle here. That is going to be when. But when we go for your jet direction, because here I have given only one side views. You have to check your all the three side views: x z, y z, and x y axis. Then you will get the, your all the three values of the, your one one delta. So this is going to be give the, your one. Then you have to check onto the, your top side. From the top side, when you are going to be see, we'll get the, your one circle, which is going to be give the, your one, and delta that is into the, your jet direction. So when we go for the own jet direction, we will not going to be get the, your complete half circle like this one. It is going to be the, your slightly less than the half circle. It may be zero. It may be one. Clear. So that is the meaning of the, your one one delta. You have to check. For example, here you can see that two, which is going to be given to the your from the top surface. So you can see that here we are going to be get the one circle, second circle. That's why meaning of the your two is here. Clear? Are you getting my point? So oh, yes, yes. I got one. it. Sir. You can check it, the complete circle is available. So you have to see how many circles are you are able to get. That is perfect half circles we are able to get it here. Okay. So in okay. that manner, you are able to check it. So for that purpose, I'm recommending first you go for your DM Bozar book where the, they have given your excellent description about your rectangular and the, your cylindrical waveguides. If you are able to identify it there, then you can apply into the, your DRA concept. Then you are able to understand what is going to be happening there. Thank you. Like feasibility of fabrication of DRAs and costs, manufacturing units and different materials for DRA, testing facilities for millimeter wave DRAs. 
that feasibility of fabrication of DRS and cost definitely it is costly. If you go for the, your materials, like in India, we are going to be have very, very, very small companies. So they are going to be give only aluminum material. Other than that, you cannot find it. After that, you have to move to the, your outside, like your Rosa ceramics are there, taconic materials are there, then TCS ceramics are there. They are companies from the outside, but they are charging very, very high. Like if you're going to be go for their one cylindrical DR, the cost is going to be more than 20 or 30,000. So it is very, very tough for their DR designing. But in case of the, your aluminum materials that you can find from your many companies that are available in Bangalore or like any material science person who are working, they know that where they can find their alumina ceramics and they can make it. So normally I'm using the alumina because it is low cost, it is available in our Indian market. And the testing facilities for millimeter wave DRS, like you can go in any DRD or ISRO labs, they are having like SAC, they are having up to 300 gigahertz. In DRDO, you can go to the your DLRL, you can go to the RCI, you can go to the LDL, LRD, everywhere they are going to be have their anechoic chambers and facility up to the 100 or 200 gigahertz. In IITs, you can go to the IIT Delhi, IIT Kanpur, even in our places where you can find the facility up to their 50 gigahertz. Then, sir, one, sir, hmm. sir, regarding this, uh, I'm asking for hybrid DRS. Sir. Yes. So when we go for multi-band DRS, sir, hmm. so the best thing is we can go for the either the hybrid DRS is some one of the best actually, or otherwise we can go for my. Uh, uh, st uh, stacking of this DRS. Sir. Mm -hmm. So I am working on this uh, hybrid DRS. Sir. Mm -hmm. Actually, when we go for the equation designing, sir, mm -hmm. uh, for the substrate and the uh, for the DRA, I go have a mathematical equations. Mm -hmm. But for feeding and all this, these there as standard equations derivations are there, sir. Mm -hmm. Or uh, because we'll be going on trial error and error like method, no, sir. No, actually. In DR, if you see, we are going to be have the two different books. One is written by your KM Luke and Leong, another one by the dear Professor Pitosa. Okay. So in those books, the first two chapters, if you are going to be based, that is purely on the fundamental parts and third chapter for your, what kind of your feeding mechanics you will use and how you are going to be design those feeding mechanisms. Clear? So yes. one of the most important criteria to design it you can go for the, your numerical techniques, like you can use your FTTD codes to design and you can check your results. Second thing, by through the, your simulations. Otherwise, like if you use the, your simple micro step line, the mathematical equations are available. But if you are going to be modify these mathematical, modify these strip lines, in that conditions, the mathematical analysis is very, very typical. And it is depending case to case. So there is no perfect formula. For your designing, you have to go and you have to design with by yourself. Means is that I should have this, uh, any equations for that, sir, or can I go? I told you that now for fundamental shapes, equations are available. Yeah. But if you want to design by your own, then you have to do it by yourself. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Like simple micro step line is there. The equations are available. In Bahal and Bharatiya and Grish Kumar books, you can check it. There's a penalty of equations. But if you want to, like you want to make the, your phi shape, psi shape, or any other angular shape, in that condition, you have to do it by yourself. But you had shown us some C shape. Is there no, sir? Huh. Uh, for that C shape... shapes, actually, so for C shapes, you have that because that is going to be give the, your printing analysis, printed technology analysis step analysis that is available, C shapes analysis is available. But if you go for the like five shape, that analysis is not available. So that you have to do it by yourself. You have to analyze your structure with respect to the, your available one. And then you make some modification in your, that adjusting theory and give your own theory. Means is there any mathematical analysis sir, for that C type you had shown no sir? Ah, that you can go for the books in the microstrip technologies. Lots of books are available. That is okay. available. Okay. For C shapes, you have to see which mode is going to be excited, either TM11 or half wave mode or TM21. That you have to check with the help of the, your, I can say that the simulation tool. And based on that particular mode, the present frequency equations are available. You can check it from there. But if you're going to be modify your C shape, in that condition, nothing is available. 
then you have to optimize your structure. That means you have to change the mathematical equation in such a way so that your analysis is going to be improved. So in that case, we have to design our own mathematical equations. Definitely. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Like from where we can get DRA of various types of antenna fabrication? Like I told you that the any companies which are dealing with the, your materials, they can provide the, your DRA ships. Like Almena, they can give you, Teflon, they can give you, or any other material if they are able to design, they can give you. What is the maximum gain we can get with the patch antenna? This is a tricky question. I can't answer it. There is no any fundamental rule that is available so that we can say that, okay, this patch is going to be give this antenna. In general, if you're going to be say that, normally single element patch antenna is going to be give the your gain nearly to your two to three gig, two to three dB. But you can enhance the gain by using your different techniques. So we cannot say that what is the maximum gain. Next, any other question? Uh, I think, sir, uh, the queries of participants are over. So any other query from any participant, please? OK. So, sir, excuse me. Yeah. Sir, uh, SAR has shown the right application the first time. He plays in the ground between. Like yeah, your voice is not uh, clearly audible. Is it audible now, sir? Yeah, yeah. Uh, in the slide, sir, shown in the first design, two uh, layer design, I think, in between ceramic is placed. Uh, so, so Suppose we, if we are going for that kind of design, how to place that ceramic material, uh, two layer designs and all. I did not get it. What do you want to say that two layers means? Two layer, suppose uh, two sides, uh, we, we may be placing the patch on the two sides. Suppose uh, in between, if you want to place the ceramic material, uh, how it should be done, sir? You have the two patches on the both sides. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. There are two different techniques. Whether you can go for the your, I can say that the sputtering technique. If you have any friend in the material technology, they will tell you how to do the sputtering. That means they are going to be either they can use your copper or silver to make the layer or paste the layer onto the your that particular surface. Second thing is that there are conducting tapes are available in the market. You take it, make the proper dimensions, and paste it. I think these are the questions when you are going to be explore the things, then you are able to understand it. So first you try by yourself. And if you are unable to get, unable to do it, then you write to me. Then I will tell you where you can find these things and how you do it. Thank so, you, sir. Thank you. Sir, one more last question. Sir, sir uh, you had shown this E field and H field, no, sir. Hmm. That fields are from the uh, simulation tool, sir. Yeah. Which simulation tool is better, sir? CST or HFS? I can't say. It is depending upon to the your user to user. If you are feeling free in HFSs, go for HFS. If you are better in CST, you go for CST or EDS, whatever the you are used to. Everybody is giving the your almost similar kind of reference. It is totally depending upon to the your users how you are using these things. Thank you very much, sir. So on behalf of electronics and communication engineering department, I sincerely thank uh, for your expert lecture. And uh, I'm sure all the queries of uh, all the participants uh, uh, have been duly satisfied. And still, uh, if there is any further query, you can post us uh, later on and uh, we can get it resolved through our expert speaker. So. Thank you very much, sir. It was uh, really a uh, nice uh, uh, learning experience. And uh, we hope to get uh, uh, many such experiences in future as well. Thank you, sir. OK, thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Can I leave now? Yeah. Yes, sir. Thank you. So.
uh, Satender. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, when will we start the next session? Uh, next session will we start 11.30. Fine. So, uh, dear participants, uh, we will take five minutes break and sharp at 11.30. We will again join uh, for the next session uh, by Professor uh, Anil Kumar Gautam. And uh, he has already uh, joined us and uh, we will start at 11.30. So, I hope uh, all of you will be well in time. And uh, the next session will also be a two-way session, the way you asked queries in this session. So I hope uh, you will uh, take maximum benefit of next session as well. Okay. So uh, Satinder, few participants are asking about attendance link. Uh, uh, 